Hi everyone, this is Andrew from Dividend Growth Masters. So today I wanted to talk about valuation, specifically valuing dividend stocks. And we're going to go over five very common valuation metrics. Now valuation is both an art and a science. And it's a phrase you might have heard a lot throughout the years. And the more I think about it, the more it's true. Stock valuation is incredibly important. Valuation just refers to how expensive or cheap a stock is based on some kind of metric like earnings, cash flow, or something else. As dividend investors, we should always strive to get the best deals on our stocks. So let's talk about the five main metrics that we'll look at today. The first is the price to earnings ratio. The PE ratio is calculated as the stock price divided by earnings per share. Earnings per share in this case is simply calculated as net income divided by the diluted share count. Diluted share count basically represents all shares outstanding plus any securities that can keep be converted into common shares. For example, it could include stock options that a company gives out to its executives. The PE ratio effectively measures how cheap or expensive a stock is relative to its earnings. For example, a PE ratio of 15 means that investors are paying $15 for every dollar of profit that the business generates. The PE ratio is a really good ratio to use, but there's a few things that we need to consider when using it. The first is that the PE ratio does not consider the capital structure of the business. In other words, it doesn't account for the level of, de of debt that the business has. Would you want to invest in a stock that trades at a PE ratio of 5, but they have a ton of debt, let's say debt is 10 times earnings? That would quickly change your opinion of the company, right? One way to get around that is just to uh, add in debt to the numerator in the PE ratio equation. The second thing that we need to consider is it's sometimes useful to compare the current stock price relative to forward earnings or future profits. This is called the forward PE ratio because we're comparing the current stock price to future earnings. Typically the stock price is compared relative to earnings 12 months in the future. So a stock price with a forward PE ratio of 20 to 20x means that investors are paying 20 bucks for every dollar of expected future profit. The price to book ratio is a very popular metric among value investors, uh, specific, specifically Warren Buffett supporters. Now let's define a few terms before we get into this. The first is book value, and that's an important tool in financial analysis. Our book value represents the net assets of a business, which just means total assets minus total liabilities. In essence, it's the theoretical value of a business if it were liquidated right now today. One metric that investors utilize in certain industries is the price to book ratio, which is simply the, the share price divided by the book value on a per share basis. The price to book ratio effectively measures how much investors are paying for the net assets of a business. For instance, a price to book ratio of 1.5 times means that investors are paying 1.5 times the net assets of the company. The price to book ratio is a useful metric for companies with primarily tangible assets, such as a manufacturing business or, an, or a bank or even an insurance company. It's not very useful in evaluating companies that rely heavily on intangible assets. Some intangible assets might be like brands or trademarks. So most technology companies and most pharmaceutical companies would not be, uh, you, would, you wouldn't use the price to book ratio for those stocks because most of the assets are intangible. The other metric that we'll look at is enterprise value uh, to EBITDA ratio. So let's define a few terms first. The enterprise value is another way to measure the company's value 
other than just using you know the plain old market pa market cap. Remember, market cap is just calculated as a stock price multiplied against shares outstanding. Enterprise value is calculated as market cap plus debt and preferred securities less cash. The reason why enterprise value is sometimes used is because it takes into account the capital structure of the business, meaning the mix of equity and debt. Now EBITDA represents earnings before taxes, depreciation, and amortization. EBITDA is sometimes used as an alternative to net income because it strips out the impact of differences in debt, uh, tax rates, and accounting. The EV to EBITDA ratio is just simply the enterprise value divided by EBITDA. And EV to EBITDA effectively measures how much a business is trading for relative to profits. The fourth metric we'll look at is price, the price to sales ratio. And this is a very popular metric for fast growing companies. It's calculated as the market cap divided by sales. The reason some stocks are valued based on sales is because they don't generate any profits. As a result, the only way investors can evaluate them is by sales. As dividend investors, we should run away from stocks that trade at high price sales multiples. High price to high uh, price to sales stocks really pay a dividend. And secondly, they don't they don't really have a history of gener generating consistent profits. Now the last metric we'll look at is the price to cash, cash flow ratio. Some investors don't like to use net income because it's an accounting number, which can be uh, manipulated. As a result, they like to solely focus on cash flow instead. Price to cash flow measures how much investors are paying for a business relative to the cash flow that it generates. So it's basically the market capitalization divided by cash flow from operations. For example, a price to cash flow ratio of 16 means investors are paying 16 bucks for every dollar of cash flow that the business generates. Alright, so those are the five most common valuation metrics that you'll encounter in when you're investing in stocks. Now if you enjoyed the video, please hit subscribe and if you have any questions or comments, just let me know below and be sure to check out my website. Uh, dividendgrowthmasters.com. I have a link in the description. I blog mostly about dividend investing and earning passive income. So if that interests you, be sure to check that out. All right. Have a good day, everyone.